earlier this morning, we had what seemed like a overly wet baguette mix. The dough was not worth uh, making into baguettes. It was far too loose. I'm gonna take the opportunity to make some ciabatta loaves for the first time in a long time. My goal today on the ciabatta is to do it uh, without any kind of rolling pin. There's one thing that I've learned since the last time I did this is the rolling pin's not doing you any favors when uh, making ciabatta. So with ciabatta, I definitely want to flour my surface. It's a wet dough and sticky dough at that. And so if I don't flour the surface, I'm going to end up not being able to move it around or stretch it out at all. It's really fundamental. We do this kind of flouring for doughs like ciabatta, doughs like English muffins. I want to try to preserve the integrity of the fermentation, all these like bubbles that have formed. I don't really want to be compressing the dough or deflating it. And so if it can come out clean from the bin, it's a lot better than if it sticks on its way out. So just by loosening it up, I'll have an easier time. Uh, although it looks like this bin wasn't oiled and I would say that that was a mistake. With wet hands, I can move the dough out of, out of the friction points. Both water and flour can uh, be kind of barriers uh, to, to get dough not to stick to things, but they work opposite each other. So you kind of have to choose wet or dry. Uh, and in this case, it's an example of me using both. Very little stick, that's kind of what I was going for. You can just see how wet this dough is coming out. It's mostly just a blob. I want to follow up right away and flour the top. And now the goal is to stretch it out. without getting it to fold under itself. So in this way, you're building tension, actually. Industrial bread is sort of ruining the whole concept of ciabatta in the sense that, uh, you know, restaurants all want their ciabattas to be these perfect squares. And you can, you can get part of the way there, but this, this bread, if you look at you know, the various bakers that make it around the world, is very rustic. It, it's, it's like a freeform bread almost. So it being the perfect symmetrical square is really not what it was designed to be. Trying to have an even spread of dough. And now I can cut these into, into loaves. I'm gonna let it rest for a little bit on the table because I did all that stretching. If I just go and cut it, it will narrow. And so uh, giving it a few minutes of rest on the table, let it relax and prevent it from doing that. So this is gonna help me make a, a measure of dough. Uh, I want four inch loaves. So these extend fully to five inches. It's gonna be a little narrower than that. I need to get some sheet trays ready or couches actually. That's four. So I'm gonna just go and do a quick scoring this is just to trace out where the various loaves are gonna be. And I'll cut them out after a few more minutes of rest. So we have two main methods of working with uh, this type of free form dough that doesn't go into like a banneton shape. Uh, one is between couches and the other is just free on a sheet tray. We've done both with ciabatta. I believe the couche method is yields a better overall product. Uh, so the couche basically acts like a bumper uh, and holds the form. This is kind of one of the more traditional ways of storing bread. Believe it or not, not all the bakers in the world had fancy bannetons uh, all the time. So there's many bread traditions that are just based on this type of storage. I'm putting a little rice flour on uh, here just so that there's less chance of sticking. And 
if you're using a countertop you don't care about scratching, then, then this is a good tool. Uh, I'm going to go plastic here just because I really don't want to scratch this top. I'm trying to handle the dough gently enough that I'm not really messing with it at all. And now after this point in the process of the ciabatta, we're going to let it get a final proof. Turn it over and bake it. There's no scoring. It needs to go in a hot oven. We're going to try it on the deck oven because it's going to benefit from that direct bake on the stone. I miss this bread, so I'm excited to have some. Even though we haven't been making this bread, I've made some version of ciabatta enough times. That was back in the days where I didn't have anybody else working at Proof other than myself and Amanda uh, after work. I appear to be out of couches right now, quite literally in the whole facility. We have no more couche cloth until more uh, pastry gets laminated. So I'm gonna go to method B this is the method that we used in the beginning, and I think probably for the same reason, Jared didn't have enough kushas. So semolina flour on a sheet tray. Now basically the assumption with this one is it's just gonna be baked on this uh, sheet tray, which it'll give us a good comparison, I suppose. I really think the ones that bake directly on the stone will be nicer. these ciabattas are doing. So I'm just giving it a touch test, seeing what kind of life is in the dough. They look nice and bubbly. I don't see much of a reason to wait. Uh, I think we can go ahead and pull them and get them, get them in the oven. Did you see these? This is ciabatta. We had baguette dough that was loose. And so I pivoted to ciabatta this morning. Something exciting about bringing back a bread as traditional as ciabatta that we haven't been able to do. And now I have to decide what my strategy is to get these off. It's first time in this oven. And uh, well, we'll see how this goes. So I would say that that was moderately successful. I figure since I'm not having to score them, if I have to invest a little bit more time getting them to where they need to go, it's not the end of the world. Again, I'm trying to protect them from deflating because at this point they're a little bit fragile and so the way in which we transfer them will make a pretty big difference. I don't know the full story, but apparently there's a rivalry between France and Italy where ciabatta is like the Italian response to the popularity of the baguette infiltrating uh, into Italy. Somebody else probably should verify that, but that is the story that I was told once.
All right. So you've got a pretty nice open crumb. I'd like it even more open. I think with a longer proofing time, we can open up those holes yeah, even right. more. Uh, it's still piping hot, and this brings me back to memories of uh, a, as an apprentice with Jared, he served me this bread with just honey, hot really? from the oven. Uh, you have some honey there? Oh, is this honey? Yes, it's honey. Great, we're going to do it. Um, Can I give the whole team some? This is the first meal I got as an apprentice back in 2017. I worked. Take it. It's ciabatta with honey. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you. 